Like that. Yay! Hey. Hey. Yeah, this is bigger feeds, much bigger feeds, so. Thank you, Neil. That's all right. said that this had happened to him before and it yeah, yeah. was not a problem. <laughs> he said it was not a problem for the finished object. No, it passed the shape, but what point is a one kilo spearhead? <laughs> the way the sword is Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you see the white bar? Yeah. Uh, normally you screen bar, I've got a but I've used elastic pants. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they do to the... Uh, Oh. 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 So that's, yeah, that's just caused by the core rising out position. That's interesting. See, if you don't make a few mistakes, you never learn. So. But it's, you know, it's come out quite well. It's got nice, it's got much nicer definition on the cast. Because the core's floated out, it's causing structure collapse. Pulling out of the fence, so the volume of metals change. 
that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it all needs reprofiling. There's one weird thing happens with this, and it's made me wonder if the swords can only go through like this in bronze age, because you get a differentiation on the tip. One goes up, one goes down. Can you see it? Yeah. And the only way to overcome that is to do this and then reverse it and do it the other side. It's the only way you can not incorporate that because you don't see that twist in the bronze age swords. So it's because you'll put one side then the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah so.